And another thing though, my wife thinks I'm mean though. She says to me all the time, like, you're mean. Their responses are very mean. You think you're playing, but you say serious stuff. And mm -hmm. you're serious about it, but in a yeah. joking manner. And I'm like, I, and where I grew up, the serious stuff is the jokes. Yeah. So I could say it and be joking, but you know I'm serious though. But mm -hmm. she's like, you can't say it like that because I know you're serious and you're not joking. But you say it and then say you're playing, but you're not playing. Yeah. I always say I'm just playing. So she's wrong. Yeah. I'm gonna say it on here because it's my show. Yeah. <laughs> she's wrong. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. these streets i feel like mental health could be this could be like a hour long two hour episode yeah, we're speaking from a place of, of knowledge of what we know yeah not yeah. for everybody not every single sure. person but of what we know watch us give us a shout yeah well, but anyways yeah, so little charlie dirty d i noticed every question i asked while i was talking about what's little trail like and everything. it was like everything for you and your answers anyway started at like 13. so that my question, my, I Maybe think when I, I asked that, we can go you back. Want, you want to do my, trail? Yeah, I was like, <clears throat> what was like 2 to 13 to 14 like? Because for me, those were the, when I talk about who I am and how I know I am now, it, though, like, everything from 13, 14 above is because of 2 to 13. Yeah, so those, those, they, they shaped me. So, until I had my first kid at 25, I think, well, I know for sure I was, I had a very bad temper. I was very angry, though. And I still have those moments now, but I tend. And I ain't never seen it. Yeah, I you always say it, and I'm like, yeah, because it's kind of romantic. I just tend, like, I tend to, I tend to think more when I'm out in the world. Yeah. Because I know I have, I have two kids and a wife at home that are depending on me and waiting on me to come home. Yeah. So I, I can't. My one bad thing about me is that I generally and usually, I react off my initial reaction. So I would say what I felt, or I would do what I felt just off of based off of what you would say and do to me so if you were to say something I felt was disrespectful then I would meet your disrespectfulness halfway or even more mm -hmm. because I don't want you to it's outdo like an me. you yeah I don't want you to outdo me with your disrespectfulness I have to outdo you yeah what's an example of that so because I'm, try I'm trying to make a connection with what you're saying all right so look maybe if Kyra was to be like just Nice. My wife is nice. Shout out to my wife. I love you, baby. But she would say something and she would be like, but, but. <laughs> I said, but. <laughs> yeah, no. A big but, too. It's like, yeah. I love you. But. But, I, but I have to say this. Yeah, go she ahead. would be like, you need to do, let's say, you should take out the trash right now because it's overflowing. Mm -hmm. And my mom would be like, why are you telling me that I should take out the trash? But in my mind, it's not. That's nice in my mind. But when it comes out, it would be like, I know what the fuck I got to do. Mm -hmm. Why would you tell me to take out the trash though? Yeah. And then that would start an argument between us. Right. When I could have just been like, in her words, I could have just been like, okay, baby. Mm -hmm. I could have said, okay, I'll take out the trash though. Yeah. It's, it's very minor. I would make minor things into major things though because of the way I grew up. It, it just affected the way I respond to a lot of things though. And another thing though, my wife thinks I'm mean though. She says to me all the time, like, you're mean. Their responses are very mean. You think you're playing, but you say serious stuff. And you're mm. serious about it, but in a yeah. joking manner. And I'm like, I, and where I grew up, the serious stuff is the jokes. Yeah. So I could say it and be joking, but you know I'm serious though. But mm -hmm. she's like, you can't say it like that because I know you're serious and you're not joking. But you say it and then say you're playing, but you're not playing. Yeah. But... And what's that make you say? <laughs> I'm just playing. Yeah. I always say I'm just playing. So she's wrong. Yeah. I'm gonna say it on here because it's my show. Yeah, <laughs> she's wrong. Yeah. But no, it, it but there, but right there may be a point. Yeah, like she's making a point, right? She may. She, Where it's like maybe I've learned to express myself in a joking manner. Yeah, to not release any anger that I have built up. Yeah. Because I still have, I still haven't decompressed totally to where. The stuff that I was carrying on my back. Yeah. It's not on my back anymore. Right. But we can't say quarantine at all. You can't you probably can't put it into letters. Okay, so 
during the period of time we had to stay at home because of the virus that was going around. Uh, my wife, we had a, it was, it wasn't a sit down, but she told me, like, she pulled me to the side and she was like, I, I really want you to work on being better at your responses and stuff like that, though. And even though I didn't think that I was being mean or I was being malicious with my words or had any bad intent with them, I was like, you know what, I'm going to work on that because I feel like it will make us better. And I don't want us to be at a point where we're stressed out and we're feeling like we can have a general conversation because Trail is going to lash out at me. Yeah. So it's something I worked on and maybe that was around maybe, I want to say March. And to this day, it's been everything has been pretty great though. Because I've been trying to watch what I say and is not that, think with initial reactions. Do you think that is also a, a message to black women too? What you just said? Like a summary of that? As far as like Her saying... pulling like, you aside and being yeah. like, you need to work on this? Yeah. Because you, you, for whatever reason, might not have been at a place where, one, I don't think you were realizing that you were doing those things that she was noticing. Because she wasn't. know, and a lot of times, I, I tell my wife that, and she gets upset sometimes because I notice small things about other people that once I bring it up, they can never forget that I bring that up. Um, but the people that are next to you and see you, they see you the way that you don't see yourself. Yeah. You know, and all they hear are sarcastic jokes and all these things. And what you may not realize in that moment is your response. You're like, but you just said some like serious shit. Serious, yeah. You just said some stuff. I'm going to bleep it out. Beep, beep. But you just said some stuff to them. They're like, and to you, you you were pulling the top off a little bit. Going, Psh, the steam was coming out. But by not really saying how you felt and letting it off like that, you weren't letting it all out. But you know, as uh, so that stuff is still steaming right now, and you yeah, just ain't let it out. Always. Yet. But you know, as growing up the way I did, you have to make jokes out of everything. Yeah. And that that's something that still it still resonates with me today because I still make jokes yeah. out of stuff that are serious. But to me, it's like it's just a little joke. Yeah. But to my wife, it's like it's a joke, but you're serious. Yeah. And I told her like most jokes are serious though. But you also brought up the thing that uh, Kyra needs to know. She grew up with a big family yeah. and traditions and other things where she might have had that support line. That's what we That talk support about that system, we right? So, yeah. I don't know why I said support line, but a support system where she could just go and talk to somebody. Yeah, and you know? I never had that. I, th I mean, I brought up earlier, and I guess I didn't bring everything back around when I talked about uh, how I think growing up in poverty is similar to the things you're describing as g growing up in a black community. Um, you learn these life skills about yourself that allows you to survive. And part of that for you was, is, I mean, making things a joke rather than facing them, blowing them up. Yeah, I mean, blowing them up. Yeah. And whether the person that's saying stuff to you deserves that or not, I mean, that's a whole other topic. But for me, being in a school, being a school leader, you know, teachers will come to you and they'll say things like these parents those parents they're saying this they don't understand they're not working with their kids they're not doing this those pronouns and, 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 and yeah and they're when I say they who are who is they who are they who are they right and for me the the big thing is like families that are in poverty and in a lot of school in the most of the schools that I've been the kids that are in poverty are black kids and the thing that you want to check people with, right? That question you want to ask anybody, right? You can't change behavior of kids, behaviors of families and things. The only thing you can change as at least somebody that is an adult in a kid's life is, is yourself, right? So you got to try and reflect on those things. So when I think about, you know, this cyc cyclical nature of family's experience with school which is usually under the umbrella umbrella of negativity right so if you go to school you had a terrible schooling right Psh, terrible then you have kids they go to school you don't want to go to parent teacher conference night mm -hmm. i no, no. i'm not reading the school newsletter i'm not doing all this no, and no. then the teacher looks at you up oh, here we go here's another black family who isn't involved they're not doing this they're not doing that rather than taking that ownership as the adult in a situation and saying how can I help how what can I do 
to, to make show sure, you yeah. that school is not the same thing that you experience. Because you and never know what somebody's going through at home. Yeah, know. like like when they say, I bring this up, and their first reaction is always to defend their kid and say, well, what really happened? And that and it's, that's a life skill that you learn from growing up in poverty. And it might be a black it thing is. too. It is. But it, it, it's that defend first, I'm listen always, listen later. I mean, that's what it, I have that. I'm always on the defense. Where you're like, what? And that, that's your life skill. Because if you didn't have that, I wouldn't have been able to survive. You're, you, that was your control of your life, right? So I, I, I think about that in my own life right now. My first response is like, what? Like, I'm not a fighter necessarily. I, I, I like, I have that mentality of like, I'm where, just, where I'm, you're like, bitch, what? I'm like, verbally bad. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. I'm verbally bad. I would never say this to my wife, but she says that. Like, you are so defensive, and I, I am defensive, though. Yeah. But it's the way I've been for my entire life. I, I've always had to be like that. Yeah. But it's a skill you develop. Yeah. It you is know, a skill, though. It's yeah. Really well, skill. yeah. And people, when they <gasps> think of skill is a positive term, but when people say you're defensive, you're only think about yourself. Or things like my wife will say to me, like, I mean, she don't say, like, narcissistic, but that's, like, what I internalize sometimes. But those are all life skills that you learn as a kid growing up in poverty. You learn that this is what I need to do to survive. Survive, yeah. And, and that, that's what it is. Like, these families whose kids are going to school who are surviving day to day, and then you tell them, your kid is not doing their homework or some other bullshit that doesn't matter to school. And if you're giving homework out right now, if you're a teacher or if you're a principal, you know it doesn't work and research shows that it doesn't work and it makes kids' lives worse. Anyways, um, the, that's not the question you should be asking. The question you should be asking is, let's talk about your experience in school as a parent. And let's talk about what we can do to create that bridge between kids' lives and schools' lives so that they don't have to change who they are when they come to school. Right. You know, they talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, but nobody ever believes it. When I hear people saying, that's what we're focused on this year, and I'm like, you don't believe that, because you're not doing the things that matter. You know, when I became a principal of a school this past year, I did probably anywhere from like 13 to 15 home visits before the school year started, where I got emails, hey, you just got hired, these are some issues I had at your school at the school that you're coming into and I'm like, let's meet. Can, do you care if I come to your house? I get to see you in your element. I get to see your kid in your element. And you get to know me like on your own level where then there is no sense of defensiveness. I'm in your home and you might feel, I mean, you're not uptight, but you're you're more comfortable that way. Yeah, I think it's an understanding though. Like he's willing to come to our house and be yeah. like, and lay down the, the not the laws, but what is it called? It's a specific word. I can never find my word, man. It's relationships. Mm. It's relationships. God, yeah. Time's up. If you're interested in seeing more of this, what you should do is like, comment, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and follow. All of those things. Yeah. That's a lot of stuff. But we're going to make it easy for you, though. Yeah. I'm trying out all these graphics. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, oh, oh.